Nomad. How you guys doing out there? It's your boy Tasty Steve, and I know you guys know me for video games, but I've definitely been kind of you know branching out, showing uh, a lot of these people that I'm interested in, especially in the space of not only video games, but music, art, creation, direction, architecture, everything. One of those people that kind of got me on my start, especially being uh, a fellow St. Louisan, uh, now resides out of Brooklyn by way of St. Louis. My boy Blake Symphony, the creator, the producer, the evolutionist, Yo. black man what enterpriser, up? you know what I'm saying? Um, shows a lot of motivation from the culture around you. Uh, I've seen you grow. I've seen a lot of the things that you've acquired uh, talent-wise, some of the things that you already have on your list. Um, and we very much have kind of the same field of interest when it comes to um, music um, and even some of those inspirations. So. Talk to us a little bit about your music making process, or just you know, uh, Nomad too. Let us let us know what your motivation is. Motivation for Nomad to um, I would we would probably have to go back to my first beat tape, uh, like officially, which was Dreamcast. So okay. every uh, just just the claim every uh, every beat tape is named after after an old Sega system. So ah, uh, so the to lore start Dreamcast. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sorry. And Dreamcast is definitely streaming everywhere now. Um, but yeah, it started with Dreamcast, and you know, just in my in my in my quest to promote, you know, I was following guys like Taku Beats and mm -hmm. Lee's and um, you know, tonight, you know, guys like that. I would go on YouTube and see them all over the world, like performing and stuff like that. Uh, you know, performing their live beat sets or whatnot. Um, and I wanted that too. You know, and, and I just developed this this travel desire to not only travel and go somewhere and kick it, but also travel and go somewhere to expand. And, yes. and, and that principle kind of grew into Nomad One, where, um, you know, I'm a transplant from St. Louis, you're a transplant from St. Louis. At some point or another, we had to identify an opportunity where our next level was. Ah, so we had to go okay. there. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, you know, that's why I go there, which is, which is, I'm just gonna jump the gun. That's why I go there is kind of like the just do it of yeah. the nomad, the nomad mixtapes and the, and the merchandise, because it means to literally go where your next level is. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I like um, both externally and internally. You know what I mean? You gotta go there. You gotta you gotta go to where your next level is. Facts. So um, you know, Nomad One, which is streaming as well, was all about like the process. If you go through track track. It starts with praise. Like you wake up and yeah. you, you know you might have your meditations or your, your prayers, and That's then me. That's me. A train. You know you hop on you, you hop on your, your your transportation, and after that, I believe it was like Game Boy. You know your your entertainment. Why you on the go? Why you on the go? You somewhere. need some. You know. You know what I mean? No, From that that's all. To, uh, What'd you say? I was like, no, these are all very these are all very good points to to point out your own you know process of going throughout the day. But it kind of like highlights everybody. It's not just like, hey, this is what I do. It's kind of what everybody needs to do in a sense to like get to that next level. You start the day, you do everything in that, or you do your routine just to be on the level. And then you go out and make more things. You make more succession in the world. That's crazy, uh, especially considering I love your mindset you. because uh, I can tell you right now, I've seen you perform uh, in person multiple times, at least <laughs> twice. You know what I'm saying? You have a... Yeah, you, you have a, a very, very uh, energetic performance. Like you came out, you pay tribute to MJ. Every time he's like, yo, I got to start the show with this. I never forget <laughs> that. He's like, yo, I got to start the show with this. And you saying that, you know, the Nomad uh, kind of motto is go there. Uh, you definitely leveled up now, man. You're a family man. You're still out here producing beats and have your own tape and your own kind of like structure to this. What what other than, you know, the video game feel, right? We know that the Street Fighter feel is there. We're going from Thailand, Russia, like stuff <laughs> like that. That's what I hear. Jump I, right. And that's what I hear when I when I saw like your idea for this. What are some of your music yeah. inspirations behind this? Because your beats are first off they're super super like interesting they have multiple levels to them Thank you. and like it, it definitely gives me the feel where like it's like you turn a corner to go into the next feel in these songs that you make so it's like it hits a certain Thank point you. and it's like a thing and then you go to the next and i'm like man that feels great <laughs> it's kind of like a trans i'm in an airport and i hit the the motorized walkway and i heard that's when i heard the beat change yeah. I'm, like, I'm almost to the gate you know yeah. like 
that's the like feels the Chicago I get from Midway it. joint with all the lights. Exactly, you know I mean? exactly. <laughs> so, can you tell me some of your music inspirations? Uh, absolutely. Um, musical inspirations, I would say, like the sun in the sky is probably uh, Michael Jackson and mm. the Jackson family as a whole and Motown. Like, yeah, those are just like we don't touch those. That's just the clap. It's, it's one of the holy above, grails. Right? It's, it's in the clouds. Yeah. The marquee clouds it's, it's is just, that. You know. There's no removing like that part of the game, right? It's just, you know, that's I think and that's the part of everybody's thing. You know, Prince, Stevie, yep. those are all there. But I would say the active real time uh influences like that really helped build me. Uh musically as a producer, definitely the Neptunes. Right. One hundred percent. Shout out to the um, Neptunes, obviously. And, and, man, um and when you when you mention like the changes, it's because I would listen to albums like Justified and I would listen to all of these different Neptune hits, the NERD songs, where they would have these bridges and yes. these B sections. Yes. And it just gave a whole nother feel. And it's almost it's like he just came up with another beautiful part. And it's like, I just want, I just want this mini song within right. this song. Yeah. <laughs> you know no, that's like, actually true. Jam pack this with as much, yeah. I just want to jam pack this with as much feel good as possible. So the Neptunes, and then I would definitely say, my holy trifecta is the Neptunes. Uh, Kanye West, um, especially like that first run of four or five albums mm -hmm. when I'm just studying him like a book and I'm studying how he's chopping samples and flipping and yeah. adding like a catchy appeal to him and I'm studying like how he's rapping on the beats um, and how he's presented it to where he's coming off more like a commercial pop dude but his music is still super like you know, like no, real stuff no, that's you know true. what I mean? That anybody from indie to mainstream to any, you know what I mean? Musical everybody could kind of appreciate it and he found a way to tie that together and then um timbaland is the third of the holy trinity because he would just take sounds from anywhere from else anything in life and make it pop. anything you know what i mean yo run, run back I that think. noise of a rain of, of a, a leaky faucet hitting a cup give me that i'm gonna record it make a beat off of that bitch. like i feel like that's the that's the literally, kind of no, thing that happens to timbaland literally like li literally um i remember are you that somebody is what was like the the big bang for my producer ears because that's the first beat i would go to school and bang on the on the desk with like everybody got their first beat they would bang yeah. on the desk with my boom boom da, boom, boom, <laughs> da, boom, boom. like everybody you know what i mean yeah. i remember we was in church choir one time and the drummer in the church choir hit the do 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 on the uh, drums real quick that's you know what i mean like that that was like the big bang for me producer wise and i'm always old temple in that like he was the first producer I would listen to and it would be like Timbaland and Magoo. I remember they did the Spider-Man sample. Yep. I remember What's So Different with the Godzilla sample. Like he would just go there. Like like the, like, like the slogan says, he would just go there. So those are probably my biggest holy trinity. And there's a lot of other people I could throw in there. But like if I just had to go up those three mm. for my style, I could totally give it to him. As far as like producing music. So I know you're talking about producing music. You talked a little bit about your influence. Um, what are some of these other things that you have done to kind of get your ear to the ground when it comes to production like this because i know you've done interviews with like lupe fiasco you're on the trail and like you said you do a lot yeah. of homework where you look at these people and you do interviews you go and you collect content how has that side of you know the the industry affected your game like we know that you have like the production side and, and speaking on the holy trinity of course people know who kanye is but how has that affected your side like how did that transition you to go to the media side and be like hey let me talk to these people as well is it more of the mindset you're trying to get or is it more like hey let me see culturally how you how this fits into the scheme of things because that's what i'm thinking it is but i wanted to ask to be sure well i i think that's what it that's what it that's the fruit that it bore in time but i remember specifically being a kid and um, I had already started making beats in high school before I really was letting anybody, but like Brandon here, if Brandon, if you see this, he was like my first fan of any of my beats. Shout outs to MF um, Green. Shout outs to MF Green. <laughs> MF Green, <laughs> SDL Hokage. <laughs> um, but um, I remember, um, you know, realizing that none of my heroes like went to college to make beats. So I didn't need to spend education on that, but what else could I educate myself with to put me in the same space, in the same room to where I never hate my job? Mm. You know what I mean? To where I'm basically like moving in the same directions. Trying and, to go and, to the and, next and, level. You know, doing the same things. Yeah. <laughs> so my mind forced me to be in it. Once I 
expressed that I might want to be a sportscaster. My, this is in high school. My mom put me in this journalism workshop in Umsu, uh, uh University of Missouri, St. Louis. And there I was able to talk about the current events, which was, there was Nelly in there. there. You know what I mean? There was different things going on at that time. And I was able to still uh, go to like a, a, a chingy, ludicrous concert with uh, Kevin Johnson from St. Louis Post Dispatch when I was like 17. And, um, you know, I realized that, yo, if I'm, I'm either going to be producing the music and the content or I'm going to be um, talking about it. Either way, I'm going to be in the biz. I'm going to be in these spaces doing what I love. And this is like the 2000s. So this is before the Internet really took things to where you can really even stretch it out further than that. I just never wanted to be outside of what I was meant to do. So I was just like, it's going to be journalism. It's going to be. Either I'm the talent or I'm just talking about the talent. <laughs> I'm the product or I'm talking about the product. Right. Either way, I'm going to stay in this bubble. So, um, and I'm just trying my best to stick with that. So I can tell you right now that I'm definitely a major fan. Uh, first off, not only support-wise, but just as a friend, right? Like, I support uh, what you do, but I'm also a fan. Um, Thank you. And that's a smart Thank way you. to put it. You use that transition. Likewise, right? too, brother. Hey, Likewise. always, always, always. And I wanted to take uh, some time <laughs> to highlight the... Uh, the cover of the the single of uh, "Slept Through the Flight." I see you got like the world map, like the the Street Fighter world map, and you rocking like the shirt. How does fashion fit into this nomad lifestyle? How does it trans? How does it you know kind of make the puzzle fit all together from your end, from your direct vision? If you had to explain it to somebody. Um. So if I were to peel this onion real quickly, so what you're looking at is the flat earth, and that's the logo for nomad. Um, the concept, but also the clothing line, Nomad World Citizens, and that's what's going to be fleshed out after I'm done with this album. Um, and the flat earth is not because I believe the world is flat, but I do, I think that the the audacity to believe that and to go with it is inspiring to me. You right, know what I mean? Right. Um, to, to, to have a mindset and to, and to back that up, I think that's what every, that the Nomad mentality is all about. Like, like you believe in something so much that you're willing to to go forth with it, uh, and and that's the flat earth. And yes, it is inspired by the uh, the, the Street Fighter uh, globe because Street Fighter was my first inclination of world travel as a kid. Um, I would you know I would pick one player and then, you know the plane would fly all over the earth. And my first inclination of Brazil at all was like Blanca. I remember yes. specifically becoming interested in Brazil because of Blanca. Um, specifically having some kind of concept of Russia slash USSR because of Zangief and then um, Ivan Drago <laughs> from Rocky but Zangief did that for me first right you exactly, get what I'm saying exactly that and, connection and strong India and all of these different places um so I pay homage to that in the merchandise because you know this was like the seed of the mentality like go there like Ryu's right Ryu Ryu I'm saying it like a dumb American but Ryu's whole like um plight was to be the best fighter in the world and he would just keep moving around and finding these fighters believe that he could be the best fighter so he would go to all these different places and 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 show what he got you know what I mean so with no shoes on by um, the way my my man was out here barefooting it to other countries I don't even know if Ryu actually owned shoes but that's how down my man was for the cause like a true nomad my man was out here barefooting it to get to other places if anybody wants to fight me <laughs> with no shoes on he Don't. has nothing to lose exactly. <laughs> exactly and i have that fight to lose right and i'm gonna tell you right now i'm walking up and i see a dude with a torn up gi and i'm like yo i'm gonna fight i'm like oh bro this dude is nah if street fighter has uh, taught me anything it's nah bro you ain't finna not not today um <laughs> no but no that's a. Um, I, no, I love that tie-in i love that tie-in that- and um, you know the, the the fashion, and I also have the sweatpants too. I know these are now out of season, out of this late June, but the summer stuff is on its way. Um, but the the fashion is is more like the uniform. You know what I mean? More like the geek. Um, yeah. You know, moving around New York City, everybody's a nomad. You know what I mean? Everybody has on foot most of the time. You're on trains. You know, everybody has somewhere to be, and they have a purpose somewhere. And, you know, you're going to wear the uniform that's appropriate for it. So if I'm working in the arts, then, you know, my streetwear is my uniform. 
I need comfortable shoes. It's, it's, it's more than just fashion. I actually need this to function in a certain That's way. True. A suit and hard bottoms wouldn't serve me. But if I'm, you know, with one of my teaching jobs, then I might actually need you know, the button up in a certain type of attire because that's what's going to serve me. And that, it can go, the nurse and their scrubs, the, the the construction worker and, you know, their thing, everybody has a uniform. And right. even though it's it's made to be fashionable enough, at the same time, it's still a function and it's still yeah. a uniform. You yeah. know what I mean? It definitely serves and, a purpose. And I really, go ahead. I was going to say, it definitely serves a purpose because once you, yeah. you you have to be comfortable and like you said this is this isn't regular nine to five work this isn't for a nine to five this is for a person that creates this is for yeah. a person that's trying to travel trying to expand you know i'm gonna tell you right now as a person that frequents a bunch of airports sweatpants and i'm yeah. i'm telling you right now i'm trying to look as comfortable Bro. and cool as possible i'm trying to be as comfortable Bro. and cool as possible this outfit is literally called the flight suit <laughs> like the flight like the flight pants and the aviator you know, suit with the, the aviator the, uh, suit champion drink you, that, yeah but and, and i mean that's why i released it in conjunction with slept through the flight because it's literally like what i would want to wear traveling in and out of airports on the on an airplane you know what i mean so everything has a purpose and it's hard to peel this back <laughs> like no you that's know true I mean? so that's why i'm really glad we can talk because it's hard to explain all of this at once so i just kind of like give a little bit at a time but everything has a purpose and these are called the flight shirt the flight pants and it, it coincides with slept through the flight it's all looped in you know what i mean right and and, and i'm dancing around the world in this outfit <laughs> <laughs> right you know every time I mean? they see you i got you got the, the flight public. suit on um yeah and, and you said you've only released a single uh, from Nomad yeah, too. So um, far, go a little bit more candid on that because you have multiple projects that are available on Spotify and iTunes right now. Um, I can tell yeah. you, I can tell you right now, one of my favorite songs you've done was uh, I had to pull it up just to be sure. I didn't want to mess up the name. It was a Night Raid, Night Ride. My bad. Night Ride, bro. Yeah. Night, yeah. Night Ride, Night Ride has you. been on my list. From, from yours for quite some time like it's that's Thank when you, I finally like when I realized I was like okay alright Blake I see you now I, I, and it's not like I see you now <laughs> but that's one that's one of my favorite things that you've ever done uh, and, you, and, and it's Thank not you. like you know some immediate stuff it's not like super pre- it's not like something that everybody is uh, it, it's it's something that I feel like you have to know Blake you have to know the person yeah. behind it to because yeah. it, it's good no matter what. But once you, you understand the person that's coming from, because of the explanation just even slightly that you just gave us, uh, it's actually perfect. Yeah. It's it's perfect just the same. So I mean, in all honesty, Thank you, man. I can't wait to to hear the rest of Nomad Two, which is available. Before we get out of here, though, before before we cut all strings and go a little further into this, where, where can these people find you? Where can people go to talk, listen, see, and buy Blake Tiffany uh, music, the flight suit? You know what I'm saying? Some of these interviews you've done throughout. You know what I'm saying? You're a teacher too. I mean, like, tell the people how Man. they're gonna get in contact with you. So the the best way to get in to to see the work and to get in contact. Um, if you're on Instagram, which everybody is, is at Blake Symphony, and then I also have BlakeSymphony.com, where all of all of the old tapes are, uh, the merch is, and all of the merch drops are gonna be. Um, you know, BlakeSymphony.com and at Blake Symphony on Instagram. Um, I can you can get to me right there. I have more links and more sites, but to keep it simple, BlakeSymphony.com at Blake Symphony. Well, look, man, you already know I'm a fan and a friend, and it will always be the case. Um, this is definitely not the Thank only you, time that we're going to talk. Guys. I'm telling you right now, this is not the only time we're going to have a conversation. But I just wanted to let you know, man, I appreciate you. And hopefully I'll see you at that next Thank destination you. as well. That's the whole plan. I'm trying to get there with you, bro. Hey, man, we got to. We absolutely got to. And I thank you for your time, bro. Thank you for likewise. your time and the inspiration. Uh, Straight up. Facts. Likewise, likewise. Y'all be good. That's Blake Symphony, Tasty Steve. We'll catch you guys next time. Peace. Like a light, out, 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 like a light, out, 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 like a light. Slept through the flight. 13 hours till I land.